This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated them for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Sit back and relax. It's time to take a wild trip to the past. Get ready for another exciting episode of Memory Lane. Uh, today's episode of Memory Lane, as you can see right here, we're gonna be playing a little bit of uh, Rocky for the Sega Master System. And there we go, we got Rocky. I actually never played Rocky before in the Master System. It looks like it's gonna be pretty cool. The uh, box art is quite simple. It has a picture of Rocky on the bottom left hand side, and that is it. Now, if you um, look at the top of the case right here, and very, very large. Writing, we have Rocky, the two mega cartridge, so they definitely put a lot of power into this cartridge. It's much more powerful than your normal single meg cartridge. So it's twice the mega power. And there we have the Sega logo right there on the bottom, and there is Rocky right there. You can see him looking over towards the Sega Master System. You can't wait to uh, be. Uh, inserted into the Sega Master System. And then we have the uh, spine label over here. We have Rocky. And the uh, North American spine labels are not really too exciting. Generic. And there you go. And what, what, That could be used a little bit of cleaning, whatever that is. Let's uh, clean that off. That looks like a, a booger. What the hell was that? So what happens when you buy used games, you just, sometimes you don't quite see every single thing. Alright, well that looks a lot better than it did before. I have no idea what that was all about. There we go. We'll keep that Clorox wipe handy just in case. That was uh, quite the surprise right there. Did not expect that. Got a couple of screenshots on the back. And it looks like your normal like 8-bit type of boxing game right here. It looks uh, the character models look pretty large though. It looks pretty big. And uh, down here it gives you like a brief description on what we're what we will be encountering right here. And uh, down here on the bottom, we do have a an American UPC code 010086. If you do see those first six digit numbers then you're definitely playing a North American game since now there are no limits which is the uh, North American slogan for the Sega Master System and you got the Sega logo right there and all right let's uh, open this case up and hopefully there is no surprises in here and the cartridge looks a little beat up it's a standard cartridge right here. That's exactly what the North American cartridges look like. Nothing really fancy, just pretty standard. The contacts look, yeah, they might need a little cleaning. I'll probably clean those. And we have the manual right here. Hopefully there is no boogers or poop. Inside the manual, let's uh, see what we have here. All right, so for our menu, we have Rocky Balboa right here on the bottom. This is 1987 right here. And we have a little illustration of the Sega Master System right there. We have the uh, controller. And ap apparently that is uh, Rocky right there. Let's zoom in on that. It's a pretty funny clip art illustration of Rocky Balboa. I mean, look at that. That's pretty hilarious. And basically tells you how to do various different moves. Let's see if we can turn this light away a little bit so you guys can see it better. You can do uppercuts, you can do uh, hooks, you can do all kinds of stuff. Guarding, you can do footwork if you want to do footwork. And then meet the fighters. You got Apollo, Lang, Drago. They're all in the game. Look at that. There's a little screenshot right there. 
It's basically telling you a little bit of a strategy of how to qualify in the game. The whole nine yards. There is no uh, scoreboard in this game, I guess. You still have a 90 day limited warranty, which I might use. I might I might actually call that number and uh, report that I, you know, I saw some uh, something on my uh, Sega Master System case right over here. I mean, what the hell is that? It's pretty disgusting. Okay, so let's uh, head over to the Sega Master System and let's play some Rocky. Alright, it's time to play some Rocky on the uh, Sega Master System. Let's uh, pop this in. Now let's uh, play some Rocky on the Sega Master System. Let's head over to the CRT. Alright, here we are playing the Sega Master System. Here we have the uh, Rocky introduction right here for Sega Master System. And look how cool that looks. You got the uh, Rocky logo right there. And it has a very, very nice shine to it. In a way that only the Sega Master System can only pull off. And that is a great title screen. You got the uh, Rocky logo on top with Rocky Balboa holding the American flag. And that's a lot of detail. That's a really, really good title screen right there. Let's look at that. That looks really, really good. Now, I've probably played this once or twice. You, know, you have to get 60 hits to qualify. Which, uh, you see that's not happening. I only got 15 hits. And yeah, here we go, we got Apollo versus Rocky. Apparently we're having ourselves a match right here. And yeah, let's see what we got going on here. Oh my god, oh no! Apollo's gonna beat the shit out of me, oh my god. Alright, we're in the first round, and it looks like Rocky's trying to box Apollo. The graphics look pretty cool. You can see the, the crowd moving around. It looks like a dim-lit crowd. All the light is focused on the ring. It looks really good. And it looks like Apollo got the worst of that round. And we got the, uh... My guys right here trying to clean me off. Alright, let's get back into the, the action right here. Because he's actually hitting pretty hard. There's no stamina meter, so you can definitely just wail as much punches as you want. And you won't get tired. As far as I know. Oh, uppercut! Oh my god. This is crazy. It's actually pretty awesome. Oh, I knocked him down! That was a hard hit. Stay down. Don't get up. Don't listen to what the computer... Oh my god, he's getting up! Oh my god. That's gonna really kill me. I really like this boxing game. This game is actually really good. Get some punches in right there, and oh, he got knocked out again. I didn't expect this game to be this good. I'm actually having a lot of fun. Oh my god, he knocked the shit out of him. Yeah, this game is actually pretty fun. Let's see if he stays down. I mean, technically, I knocked him out three times. That should be... that's... that's it. Yeah, he's done. That's it. You can see Apollo, like, crying over there in that little uh, graphic that they have on the screen, and the Rocky's, like, getting really happy about it. Look at Rocky Balboa just hammering away at that little punching bag. He's got to button mash as fast as possible. It'd be cool if you can fight uh, Hulk Hogan in this movie, and then the movie, the, the game, and then have Hulk Hogan toss you into the crowd like he did in the movie. Oh, Rocky is getting his ass whipped. Oh, my God. What the hell? Man, Mr. T ain't playing around. He almost knocked me out of the ring. And Mr. T is gonna kill me. Oh, he's gonna kill me! What the hell? Get around, oh my god. He's, he is gonna kill me. I got 10 seconds left, I might be able to escape. Oh, barely. He literally knocked me out, like, at the last second. Oh my god, he knocked the shit out of me again. Oh, get up, get up! Wow, he actually did get back up. He's gonna have to do a lot of- oh my god, he's done. There's no way that he's gonna get back up this time. He beat the crap out of him. Like, really beat the crap out of him. The difficulty gets hard pretty quick though, so... Don't let the first match fool you, because the first match is actually not bad. But once you get to Mr. T... I pity the fool that has to fight Mr. T, because he'll beat the shit out of you. There you go, today's episode... 
of Memory Lane. We're going to be playing a little bit of uh, Shanghai. It's time to sit back and relax and play a little bit of Mahjong. Now, uh, let's look at the, uh, the, the label art right here. I mean, first of all, right there on top, apparently this is considered a family game. It says family right there, so if you have to, you want to you buy a game for the family, there you go. Buy yourself Shanghai for the Sega Master System. And uh, there you go, it's Michonne. And the, uh, the label art is actually not too bad. You have a pretty big illustration right here of Michonne being played. And uh, it definitely covers up most of the case, so it's not like super generic looking like most Master System box art. So this passable it actually looks pretty good. On the, uh, the end label, let's see, we'll zoom in right here, let's see if we can focus. We have a uh, Shanghai in pretty small letters. And this is uh, a one mega cartridge. And they have the Sega logo right there. So there's nothing really too fancy right there. It's just your basic generic looking stuff. And on the back right here, let's see if we can focus that right there. So you guys can see that we have a couple of screenshots going straight down the left side of the case. And there's nothing really too exciting to see right here. It's basically your standard Michon screenshots. The, uh, the that's probably the title screen right there. That looks pretty cool. And it gives you a uh, description on the game right there. And down here it says one or two players peripheral controller mega type one mega. <laughs> it's really weird. I have no idea what the hell that's supposed to mean. Your mega type. What is your mega type? It's a one mega. Okay, so I'm not sure if the other cartridges have that. I, I don't see that too often. And uh, there you go, you got the UPC. It's an American cartridge. And you got the uh, Sega from Tonka. And that's pretty much it. And when you open up the game right here, you have the uh, quite the generic cartridge. Nothing too fancy. Let's see if we can. See right there, you got Shanghai. You know, all Master System cartridges look generic. There's nothing really crazy fancy about them. That's pretty much it. We got the manual. And uh, I really doubt there's anything really entertaining inside the manual, but we'll definitely uh, take a quick gander at the manual right here. We'll take a look at it and see. The uh, front of the manual looks pretty much the same as the uh, front of the box art. You got your normal generic clip art of the Sigma Master System that they use in every manual and the controller as well. Got like a grayscale looking screenshot right there. Couple more screenshots. And uh, they pretty much give you uh, different ways to play the game I guess. I, it's interesting. I guess they explain each uh, block, what they are, and all that stuff. So if you want to go into a lot of detail on how to play Mahjong, here it is. I mean, they tell you like every little thing here. And then, of course, you have the, uh, the scorebook portion of the manual where you can actually write down your score. And uh, you do have a 90-day limited warranty on your Mahjong cartridge. So if something goes wrong with it, you can... Call Sega, or you can write to them directly and let them know that your Mahjong's acting weird. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's head over to the Sega Master System and let's play some Shanghai. All right, so we have our Shanghai cartridge right here. Let's pop that in there. And uh, let's head over to the CRT and let's play some Mahjong. Alright, here we are playing the Sega Master System. And we're going to be playing a little bit of uh, Shanghai. It's time to relax, sit back, and play a little bit of Shanghai. We got a, uh, an awesome title screen right there with the dragons spitting out fireballs. Alright, let's uh. Okay, they're giving you a rundown here. It's like Michonne. Okay, so it's uh, 144 tiles. 
the object of the game is to remove all of the tiles. They must be removed two at a time. Okay, so... Basically, they're giving me a whole rundown on how to play this game. And here we have, basically, Mahjong on the Sega Master System. So we have to figure out how to play this. So it looks like this piece and this piece down here. Right, we got rid of those two right there. And basically the only thing you have to do in this game is match up the blocks. And make sure that they match. And select them using the 2 button. Which on this controller there's a 1 and 2 button. And that's basically how that works. There's nothing really too crazy going on here. So that's basically how you play this game. It's nothing really too crazy. I've been playing it for like 5 minutes now. We got the counter right there. And down here it tells you how many tiles you have left. Now that is basically Mahjong on the Master System. It's called Shanghai. Now uh, today's episode of Memory Lane, as you can see right here, we're going to be playing a little bit of uh, Spider-Man right here on the Sega Master System. Now this, apparently the uh, North American copy of this is really expensive, so this just happens to be a uh, European copy. Oh, it's a lot less money, I guess. So let's see what the European copy has on this case. We have the action right there. On the top it says, Play on Master System, Master System 2. And uh, Mega Drive Genesis, Master System Power Base Converter. A little adapter. And uh, you got some pretty cool looking uh, box art right there. Pretty awesome. You have Spider-Man flying around in, in the city. So you can uh, focus that so you guys can see it better. There you go. Uh, pretty awesome looking uh, box art right there. Usually Master System has really bad box art. You have a Spider-Man logo right there on the spine label with the Sega logo. And of course you have a uh, couple of screenshots right here. Let's take a look. We have a Spider-Man, looks like a platformer, there we go, that's much better, let's go back and look at those again. And it says that, that what is this to be exact, it says stage, stages 5, so I'm guessing it tells you how many levels there are in the game, it's interesting. And the American Master System games, yeah, I never see that. Now that is a uh, British or European EPC code. Uh, the American codes, as you can see here, always begin with 010086. If you have a Master System game that has something else, it came from somewhere else. Alright, so uh, there's a whole Storyline on this, what, Kingpin and then doing all kinds of crazy stuff in New York. I mean, look at this. So, oh, it's in multiple langu languages also, so it's not like one huge paragraph that you have to read. I mean, this happens to be in several different languages. Alright, so basically the only one that you have to read is the one on top. That little brief description right there. Now all these other languages could be like German, French, and all that other stuff. And now down here... It says... One player peripherals the Sega control pad or control stick. And you don't see the uh, that Sega slogan down here on the bottom like on the American Master System cartridges. Like right here, you'll see... Now there's there are no limits on the American games, on the European games, apparently that doesn't exist. Alright, so let's uh, open the case up. And uh, we got the uh, cartridge right here, this is a European Spider-Man. I believe that this came from Germany. And we have a couple of uh, annuals and stuff here, what, what is this? So uh, let's find out. It looks like a Master System poster. I wonder if it's the same one that we had before. It's a little ad. 
That's actually pretty cool. And you can see right here that it's still in English. Arcade games, and it gives you like a whole rundown on pretty much everything that's being sold on the Master System during that time. Let's see, zoom out and see if you guys can actually see everything here. That's actually pretty cool. We got a new game that just came out, Heavyweight Champ. And look, oh, look at this. Got the Mickey Mouse game. Got all types of crazy stuff on the back right here. I guess Master System was extremely popular over in Europe. Look at this, they have uh, the Master System 2 right here. Got the uh, controllers, joysticks, uh, you got uh, the Genesis right there, the Mega Drive just came out. Just advertising that. And they got the Game Gear, I mean, look at this, this is pretty cool. Over on this side, you have your Sega Games Catalog. And I've never seen that instead of an American uh, case before, with the manual. So that's definitely uh, different. Let's put that over here, let's look at this manual real quick. And it looks like we have some writing on the manual, oh boy. Maybe they used a the scoreboard, let's find out. The manual does look a little weathered and dirty. Looks like it's something spilt on it. Alright, so on this manual they have an illustration of both the, uh, the Master System 2 and Master System 1. So this must be a fairly newer game. Got a couple of screenshots. <clears throat> and there's a lot of text. This is in multiple languages, so there's not, not a whole, whole lot here that you want to see. It's some grayscale screenshots. But I'm a Interested in seeing if, if there's a scoreboard in the back here. And what do you know? It looks like somebody was actually using the scoreboard right there. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Let's uh, see exactly who this person is. It looks like it says... Oh, let's open that back up for a second. So we're going to focus the camera. Can't quite make out that, uh, is it F-R-A, or is it something else? Maybe 7-R-A? What is that? Well, it looks like that person actually uh, was attempting to write down their score at one time. They didn't complete it, they didn't put the whole thing down. Uh, this came from Germany, so that could be somebody from uh, over in Germany that actually was playing this game. And they're playing it pretty hardcore, and they wrote their score down. That is the first time I've ever seen that. That's actually pretty cool. Now this is a pretty standard manual. There's nothing really fancy in here, but the European manuals open up um, horizontally while the American ones open up vertically like this. So that's one thing you can definitely tell the difference between a European and an American game. It's pretty interesting. So uh, let's head over to the uh, Sega Master System, and let's play uh, this European copy of Spider-Man. Alright, so we have our Spider-Man cartridge right here. I'm gonna pop that in, and let's play some Spider-Man! Alright, here we are playing this Sega Master System. I'm going to be playing a little bit of uh, Spider-Man, and this is the uh, European copy of Spider-Man. Let's see how exactly this plays out. We have Spider-Man versus the Kingpin. And we've got that cool looking uh, title screen right there. That is pretty cool looking. You got some awesome uh, Spider-Man music in the background. Uh, the graphics look really good on the, t t uh, the title screen right there. Alright, so we have uh, a bit of a story going into the game. It's Hello New York. I have learned that 
The well-known Spider superhero, Spider-Man, has now turned to a life of crime. Alright, let's get this. Uh, okay, so we have difficulties. You can also listen to music. You can also listen to the sound effects. Now it's right in the main menu, which is weird. Oh my god, everybody shoot me, oh my god. Look at this, we're climbing up the window here. Trying to survive, because the cops are trying to kill us. Climb up, oh my god. So I guess they think Spider-Man's a bad guy, so all the cops are coming after us. I should be pretty safe up here. I can do that uh, that car to go. Oh, oh, I got shot. That son of a bitch. They can shoot out webs, which is pretty cool. And the controls are actually pretty easy on this game too, which is nice. Alright, so what exactly are we supposed to do here? There's probably something in the description that I read, didn't, didn't read. And they killed me! Okay, so I provided the police with the full document. Okay, so... I think we have to defeat the, um, the police in this game. So let's try this again. I've never actually played a Spider-Man game before. It actually, the controls are really good. Okay, so we have a, okay, so we have easy nightmare mode. Can you imagine what that is? All right, so here we are. And there's a building over here. What happens if we go up here? How do we go inside that window? There's gotta be a way of doing it. Okay. Looks like I might have done it. Oh, there's a dog. Oh, the dog's... The dog was biting me, what the hell? All right, let's, let's go over here and see what we have. And uh, so far this game seems like it's actually pretty fun. It's actually not bad. The audio is much louder than a normal Master System game. Seems like a lot louder for some reason. So I don't know what's up with that. And I like that you can actually fly... Th oh my god, what is that? This guy with a forklift. What is this guy doing? Oh, he hit me. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god. That's crazy. Wait, did we kill him? Maybe we did. Let's walk over here. Oh no, he's coming back. Oh no, what, 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 what the hell is this? Is that Kingpin? Oh, that's crazy. Get him, get him. Oh my god. I got him. Oh my god, that was crazy. Wow. It's like a swamp, swampy looking Spider Man creature right there. And uh, the character models and the graphics look really good. It, it actually looks just like Spider Man. Oh, there's rats. Oh my god. Kill that rat. <laughs> this is a great Spider Man game. The ninja. I mean, how generic is that? The ninja. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this for a second. 
Uh, the Sega Master System is definitely not known for its uh, good box art, so let's just take a look at what we have here. We have uh, a ninja throwing some Chinese stars, and that looks like he has a, a, a katana on his back, so he's going to definitely cut somebody up. Now, let's see here if we can focus. And a uh, spine label. The ninja. It's always confusing to look at the spine labels on these things because I I, I immediately look at this, the mega cartridge, and that throws me off. And then we have a whole backstory on the ninja right here. It says the time is Japan's colorful past, but right now you have your hands full of trouble and ninja darts. The darts. Are your secret weapon <laughs> okay so yeah it gives you like a whole little story right there it's pretty crazy and down at the bottom it says now there is no limit and it has the Sega logo which is pretty cool and uh, we get a couple of screenshots here let's see if we can uh, look at those get a little idea what this game looks like this is probably the most useful portion of the box art right here is the screenshots uh, everything else looks like guaranteed value from Walmart. And uh, that's pretty much the box. I mean, there's nothing really fancy about this box. I mean, the box is a little beat up. But don't let the box, don't let the cover of the book judge what's inside. Because there's a good chance that this game is going to kick your ass. Because that's how Sega Master System games are. Usually the, the label, the box art, not really impressive at all, but once you pop the game in and start playing it, it's crazy. And you can see right here, this is the cartridge. And all the cartridges look the same, nothing really fancy, it's in pretty decent shape. Now there is a manual, might as well take a look at that for a second. Let's see uh, what we have here. We have uh, the ninja, <laughs> right there on the, uh, the front of the... Uh, the manual right there. It gives you like another whole spew of nonsense about the ninja right there. And it says, what's happening? Now these uh, manuals are just as generic as the, uh, the the box art, so don't get too, your hopes up. Don't get too excited. You get a nice little illustration of the actual controller right there. The pages are kind of thick on this one, which is surprising. You got some nice little illustrations of the enemies. And uh, let's look at that. That's some crazy looking stuff right there. Let's see if we can make it to the next page. We've got a couple of uh, grayscale screenshots. Nothing really too crazy here. I mean, just look at this. I've never played this game before. So to be quite honest, I don't know what the hell to expect. But well, this is the ninja. All right, this is one thing I get a kick out of. I looked at a few Master System uh, manuals before, and they have score books, like little scoreboards in here. You can write down your name, what your score. That is actually pretty cool. Just enough room to put your initials, the date, and the score. And of course you have your 90 day limited warranty for the Sega card and cartridge. Just in case something funky happens to your game and you can contact Sega right here. There's the phone number. It's probably somebody else's phone number right now. And uh, you can give them all kinds of problems concerning your cartridge which is unlikely to happen. And uh, that is the Ninja, let's head over to the Master System and let's play The Ninja. And that is a great little Sega Master System intro right there. One of my favorites and here we have a game known as The Ninja. Let's find out what the ninja's all about. Let's see what we have here. We have a nice, huge, like, massive story right here. Oh my god, what's all this reading right here? What is this? 
This is an incredible amount of uh, story reading right here. This game has a huge backstory to it. It's like a novel. The Ninja! Look at the uh, cool looking uh, title screen right there. You got the Ninja over here on this side. You got the like, a house over here. You got some like crazy looking fire in the background. Let's find out what this is all about. Alright, so if you push two, you can you, like strap back and forth and shoot like that, which makes sense. It looks like we got a, a, a special power up here. We're shooting something that's much larger than before. Now, I like in this game how they have ninjas that sneak out of nowhere and they kill you. It's almost like a real thing right here. That's what ninjas are known to do, being sneaky little bastards. Ow, oh, ow, oh, he's gonna get me out! Oh. Wow, he, got, he definitely killed me, what the hell? And uh, we made it to another level. What, what is this? This is crazy. It's almost like Isometric V right here. Oh, that ninja came out of nowhere. What a dirt bag. And we got the uh, game over. I mean, that is actually a pretty fun game right there. Let's see if there's any uh, demonstrations of what the gameplay looks like on here. This game is uh, copyrighted for 90, 1986, so... This game is, if it's from 96, I'm not, or 86 that is, I'm not sure if it is. Yeah, this is 86 here. If it's that old, that's actually a pretty old Master System game. And check this out, this is a little bit of a gameplay demonstration by the computer. The computer is giving us a whole rundown on how to play this game. We got the ninjas doing their chasing right here. And this game is definitely tough, but it's actually pretty fun though. And uh, today's episode of Mermaid Lane, we're going to be playing a little bit of uh, Thunderblade, as you can see here. Have you ever played Thunderblade before? You know, look at the, uh, the, the box art here. It looks actually uh, pretty good. It doesn't look quite generic as usual. Now you have the uh, huge arcade little thing right there on top. It's telling you this is definitely an arcade game. If you love arcade games, you're going to love this game right here. You got the uh, Thunderblade logo right there. Has some medicine red looking logo right there. And you have the Sega logo right there on top. Now let, let's look at what's going on here. This reminds me of like a, an Atari box art or label. So you have a, a helicopter that looks like it's trying to take out four tanks and two other helicopters. And you have all kinds of explosions going on, missiles being shot. All kinds of crazy stuff happening. And that is some crazy looking box art. And it looks pretty cool for Sega Master System uh, standards. It looks really, really good. So that's definitely uh, some awesome looking uh, box art right there. And on the spinal label over here, we have Thunderblade, the two mega cartridge by Sega. So this is definitely a two mega cartridge game, not a, not a one mega cartridge. So you expect some crazy stuff in here. All right, so right here we have Thunderblade. We've got a couple of screenshots here. This almost looks like a European game. What's... Uh, the UPC is American. But the way it's laid out, it almost looks like a European game. All right, so the screenshots looks like a shoot 'em up. We've got top down shooter. And that's exactly what it looks like here. So you're flying a helicopter and you have a, a brief description, not, not so brief, it's actually quite a bit of a description on what's going on. Now in this game you actually have uh, that little uh, thing right here, where it tells you how many stages and rounds it is, which is weird because I usually only see that in European games, but apparently there is a few American games that have that too. And uh, it says uh, players, one, peripherals, control pad. Control stick and mega type 2 mega, so you have 2 mega in this thing. Uh, the dead giveaway that this is an American game would be that slogan if it's somewhere around here. Where is it? Uh, I don't see it. That's weird. <clears throat> Something's a little off about this game. So this is a... Uh, the cartridge right here, there's nothing really fancy about the cartridge. You can see the pins on certain mega, not mega drive, but certain Master System games. The pins are 
in weird spots. You can see that the pins are like, there's a chunk of pins missing here. I guess not needed. Now this definitely looks like a European case for the exception of the UPC code. It's really weird. Now, I, you know, if it was a European cartridge or Euro European case, it would have been in multiple languages right here. But yeah, that's definitely either in a Canadian or an American case right there. And uh, that is Thunderblade, so uh, cool looking box art. I don't have the manual for it, unfortunately. So let's uh, head over to the Sega Master System and let's try out Thunderblade and let's see how fun this is. We have our copy of Thunderblade right here. And uh, it's time to play some Thunderblade on the Sega Master System. Let's pop it in and let's go crazy with Thunderblade. Alright, here we are playing the Sega Master System. Look at that. Awesome Sega introduction right there. And here we are playing Thunderblade. And we got the uh, Thunderblade title screen right there. We have the helicopter flying around buildings. and Looks like we have a little demonstration of what the game looks like right here. And uh, it looks like some sort of shooter. Now, I've never actually played this game before, but it looks pretty cool. You got the, uh, looks like a game over with the helicopter blown up. It's pretty crazy looking. Let's give it a try. We got stage one. Let's see here. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, what is this? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Let me look at that. And I never played this before, so I'm just... Finally going into this game, trying to figure out how to play it, and it seems pretty self-explanatory. Like a shooter, it actually looks pretty good. It looks like a 16-bit game. I'm gonna be honest with you, it actually looks really good. Oh, go around. And the shadow effects? No, I didn't notice that until now, but look at the shadow effects on that helicopter. That is pretty uh, detailed and technical for a uh, Sega Master System. Look, it actually moves like there's death. So it's not your like regular standard boring looking shadow effects. You actually see death right there. That looks pretty cool. And this is called uh, Thunderblade on the uh, Sega Master System. This game is uh, definitely a pretty fun shooter game. It's simplistic, but it actually has some pretty nice graphics and it's pretty tough. So right away when you go into this game, don't expect to you know, fly through it easily. Let me see if I can go through it without shooting a weapon once. Let's see how that works out. Alright, so we're just gonna try to... F oh, well... That didn't work out too well. We're gonna try that again. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can fly through. We got tanks right here. We have to be careful. And oh, the helicopter took me out just by flying into me. The freaking dirt bags. Alright, let's do that again. Oh, oh! That was close. I love the uh, shadow effects on the helicopter, how you fly over here and you still see the death right there. That was, that's pretty great. Oh! There's, there's so much little details I'm distracted. I guess a very, very nice looking game on the Master System. And we only played like 10 minutes. So we'll, we'll try it one more time. We're going to try to play at least a couple more minutes into the game before we call it quits. Alright, let's give it a try here. Oh man, they, those helicopters come out of nowhere. Alright, let's uh, see here. Alright, we're gonna try to shoot every helicopter possible. I got the tank taken care of. Alright, so far we're doing. Oh my god! We're gonna be playing uh, Transpot. For the Sega Master System, let's uh, zoom out here and give a little idea of what we're playing. We got Transpot. Uh, Transpot is a card Sega card game for the Sega Master System, as you can see there. And uh, got the little card right there. And uh, this appears to be some sort of shooter. And uh, the Sega Master System. 
boxes are uneventful, nothing really fancy. You got the uh, trance spot Sega card thing right there. Let's see if we can see that right there. Let's see if we can zoom in. Nothing really fancy here. You got the Sega logo right there, trance spot right there on top, and Sega card. All right, let's see if we can get this to work. And there is no manual, unfortunately. That would have been nice. We do have a brief uh, description of what this game is about right here. And a couple of screenshots. Let's look at the screenshots. It's a little bit more fun to look at than the description. And it does appear to be like a shoot 'em up type deal. Now this game was definitely, uh, I believe it was called something else in Japan. It's probably a lot more popular in Japan. This is what the card looks like. Let's hold it exactly how they would hold it right here. Let's see if we can... Uh... Let's see if we can match that up right there. There we go! Look, look at that! That is it right there. So that's the card. That's what it looks like. You have the transpire, you have the little robot right there on the front. He's uh, holding his arm out. He looks like a, like a mech Gundam type looking thing. And uh, you have the little contacts right here. You got the Sega logo right there. And on the back of these cards it says, Sega card for use with Sega system only. Caution, avoid exposing card to extreme temperatures, excessive humidity, or direct sunlight. It says, uh, be careful not to bend card or scratch surface of card. For protection, when card is not being used, place card in a uh, protective plastic case. Now these cards came with a little small case that went inside here. I don't have that, so the one thing that I currently have is pretty much that, and that's what it does. So we're gonna play some trance bots. Uh, let's head over to the Sega Master System and uh, let's play some trance bots. We're gonna put our trance bots card right into here and let's play some trance spots on the master system all right here we are playing the Sega master system one of my favorite all-time great gaming consoles right here we got trance spot and this is one of those weird gaming cards, the Sega cards. Let's uh, do a little demonstration of what this game looks like here. Look at this. It's like a like a shooter. Yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff going on here. Oh, look at this. Looks crazy. Crazy shooting action. You got like a little tank right there in the bottom. You got all these crazy balls flying around over the place. Oh, he trans turned into like a bot. Now, I'm thinking over in Japan, this is actually a different game altogether. It has a different title. Uh, of course, the Japanese version is probably more cooler. Let's uh, let's check this out. We got Trance Spot. All right, let's uh, see how this plays out. Make sure we gotta dodge the uh, those red balls flying around. Over. Oh my God! Look at that. So you fly around and uh, try not to get hit by these balls. And they look like they have spikes. And I'm getting that thing right there. What, 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 oh. Now we got some more crazier looking things here. They look, they look like they have red eyes. What, what is that? Now the Sega Master System, uh, for me, it was like a. Uh, it was an 8 bit console, but it almost played a trick. Like it almost looks like a 16 bit almost. I think that's one reason why it lasted so long, and, and I guess it still exists today and down in Brazil. So it's definitely a really cool looking gaming console. And look at the uh, these square looking things right here. They're spinning. I actually never played Transpots before. This is actually uh... oh, I got hit by what? What the hell was that? I was trying to get that truck on the bottom. You got the nice little detail in the back. It looks like a like a power plant, like a Chernobyl type thing. Look at that. 
Oh, 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 oh. And these balls are getting a little bit more crazier now. And this is your starter weapon. It's definitely not quite effective. It's okay, it gets the job done. I will definitely put this in, like, in the top favorite Master System games. It's actually pretty fun. I mean, it's challenging I'm, at the moment, not that good at it, but... Uh, it's definitely pretty good. Let's see if we can, uh, get somewhere. You can see the, uh, the power plants in the background, as mentioned before. It, it almost looks like they're... They're, they're destroyed or something like there's definitely got uh, some leaning towers right there in the back and I don't know what, what that what's up with that but all right let's uh, there's definitely a story to the game and that's where we uh, got screwed up before because uh, every time I try to hit those trucks I get hit by and, and oh that enemy got me what the hell and uh, today's episode of memory lane, we're gonna be playing uh, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge for the uh, Sega Master System. And uh, this game right here happens to be hands down one of my favorite NES games of all time. And let's uh, take a closer look here. Let's see here. Look at that WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge on the uh, Master System. Never actually played this before, but I loved the NES version so much. And you can definitely tell that. Uh, we have basically the same exact label. In fact, I have the, uh, the NES version right here. Let's take a look at it for a second. So they might have changed out some of the wrestlers, because, you know, over here they have the Bounty. Of course, they still have the Undertaker. That looks like a slightly newer picture of the Undertaker right there. You still have Bret Hart right here, you have Macho Man. That that looks like a slightly different picture of the Macho Man right there. And now of course you have, you know, Hogan. So I'm suspecting that the roster is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be interesting to see. So let's uh check out what we have here. We have uh basically the same label as the NES version, except for different wrestlers. I don't know if Papa Shango's in this version or not. I don't remember. Would have to definitely check that out, but here we have um, an example of what the back of it looks like here. Yeah, let's see, we're gonna zoom in and take a look at what we have for screenshots. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's me or not, but those screenshots don't look like the Sega Master System version. I've actually seen screenshots of the Master System version before. That looks like the NES version of the game. That's really weird. I am pretty, pretty confident. See, there's Roddy Piper right there. So we'll do the test. If Roddy Piper is in the game, I mean, I'm pretty confident that that's the NES version of the game right there. That looks just like the NES version. That does not look like the Sega Master System version of the game. That's really, really weird. They literally, they, they have... In fact, what I'll do real quick... I'm gonna put the, um... The NES on real quick with this so we can actually see... What this looks like. Just so you guys can actually see that this is definitely not the screenshots in the back of there. Are definitely not the uh, the Master System version. That is so weird. I don't quite understand why they would do that. All right, let's. Uh, I mean, everything else looks pretty much normal at this point. I mean, you have a uh, a description of the game right there. Yeah, the WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge logo on the top right right there. You got the Flying Edge logo right there. Now, I really didn't notice the screenshots until afterwards. And uh, that is really, really, really weird. I mean, that... If... Alright, so let's turn the camera over here for a second. This is the, the NES, and normally I don't do this, but we're going to just take a look at this real quick. Alright, so... 
that's the title screen for the NES version right there. Let's keep that in mind for later on. Alright, so we're just gonna do a regular match. Okay, so this is your roster. You have Hogan. You have the... Excuse me right there. You got Hogan, you have uh, The Undertaker, Jake Roberts, Ted DiBiase, Randy Savage, Bret Hart, Sid Justice, Roddy Piper, IRS, The Mountie, and uh, Papa Shango is not in this game. So you can definitely see that the roster is different. Alright, so we'll pick a couple of wrestlers here, but I am very, very confident that the screenshots on that case... This is the NES version. What the hell is going on here? Alright, let's, uh... Okay, look at this. Look at that. That's what the NES version looks like right there. Look at the, uh, top right there. Look at the guardrails. Look at the, uh, little illustration of the wrestlers right there. Let's see if we can focus the camera. You can see this. Let's look at that. Here, let's move that out of the way. You can see that's... Now look at this. Alright, let's see if we can focus this camera here. It's the NES version on the back of the case. I mean, what the hell? It's literally the NES version. I've never seen that happen before. That's... That's really, really strange, but, you know, let's, uh, I never played the, I've only seen screenshots of the Sega Master System version, enough to know that's not, that is not the Master System version of the game right there, and that's really weird that they will do that, and, uh, let's see, it's just, accept the toughest challenge in all of wrestling, the WWF WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. It says you control every action-packed move and maneuver, clothesline, elbow drops, uh, body slam, drop kicks. It says uh, when you're ready for the ultimate wrestling challenge, the steel cage is ready for you. And of course, it's in multiple different languages right there. And uh, right here on the bottom we have the UPC, it says Flying Edge, and it has a uh, British UK address right there and it has the uh, player one player and it has the Sega control pad and on the spine label right here you have a uh, flying edge you have the Wrestlemania steel cage challenge you have uh, this little sticker right here on the actual case which this might have been a rental at one time who knows maybe over in the uh, UK this was a rental Instead of a video store, it says 179. And uh, usually, when you see that over here in the U.S., that's this is pretty much a sign that it was probably a rental. You have the Master System logo right there. All right, let's uh, go inside the case, and of course, you have the cartridge. Let's zoom out here for a second. I mean, so far, this is pretty interesting. The screenshots on the back of the case are very, very intriguing. I wonder what the uh, the manual is going to have. Alright, so we have the uh, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. It actually has an end label, which is pretty nice. You have the logo on the actual cartridge. It's uh, blue and white rather than you know, your standard red in over here in North America. This is a British game. It wasn't available in North America. Only the NES version was available. And uh, this is the manual right here. Okay, so we'll uh, zoom out here for a second. This manual looks pretty beat up. Now, uh, that's usually a sign that this has been pay played quite a bit. Now, that's pretty much your stuff right there that you would see. And it has an epilepsy warning right away on page number one. And uh, this manual is in pretty rough shape, which indicates to me that it's been played a lot. That's also a sign it might be, might just be a, a rental copy of the game. If not, whoever owned the game originally played this a lot, like a real lot. Okay, so... 
I mean, what the hell? I mean, look at this. I mean... Check this out. Those are NES screenshots. That's not a Sega Master System screenshot. Those are NES screenshots right there. I know... I played the NES game for years and years and years. I know the NES game when I see it. That is... Literally the NES version of the game right there. That is crazy. Yeah, Roddy Piper. I mean, I wonder if they have a roster listing on this game. And they continue to use the NES screenshots in the manual, which... I can't believe that. I mean, that's unbelievable. You have the limited warranty right there. I wonder what they were thinking when they did that. And of course, you have multiple different languages going straight... Straight down to the end right here. And eventually, in the end, you might see... Like a copyright, you know, or something like that. And that, that's pretty much it. So they continue to use the NES screenshots inside of a Sega manual. That's really, really crazy. I wonder if Roddy Piper's actually in the game. I, I saw Roddy Piper screenshots many times. And uh, let's go play WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge on the Sega Master System. Now it's even more intriguing to play this game because of the discovery that they're using NES screenshots. So let's uh, check that out. That's pretty crazy. Let's go find out what they have in this game. Alright, we have our WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge right here. Let's pop it into the uh, Sega Master System. And with, without any further ado, let's uh, check this out. This is going to be really, really interesting. Alright, here we are playing the Sega Master System. And here we are playing uh, WWF WrestleMania Steel Key Challenge. And for some reason, the uh, copyrights say Super WrestleMania, which is really weird. Uh, Super WrestleMania came out on the uh, Genesis and Super Nintendo. So you have Flying Edge. And uh, let's check this out. We have WrestleMania Steel Case Challenge. So the uh, the title screen definitely uh, the logos look a lot nicer. But the, on the NES version, you had uh, Hulk Hogan. And this is a little example of what the gameplay looks like. And uh, the graphics overall look look to be a little bit nicer than the NES version, for the exception of the uh, the WWF logo that's in the center. Of the mat right there looks a little bit distorted and doesn't look quite centered. Uh, the NES version I think looks a little bit nicer. Uh, as far as the title, the title screen goes, uh, the NES version is classic because it has Hulk Hogan on the title screen, but this one definitely has a much more nicer. Let me see here. The uh, WrestleMania logo itself looks nicer on the uh, Master System version. Alright, let's uh, look at what we have here. Here we got player versus computer, players versus computer, player versus player. So I believe this is the same exact stuff that you see on the uh, the NES, NES version of the game. Let's uh, do this right here. Alright, so... Let's see, one-on-one. -on -one, let's see what we have here. I just want to check to see what we have for roster. And we have a cage or a regular, so it's the same thing as the NES version so far. Alright, so we have Hogan, The Undertaker, Tatanka, which... I don't remember... Is Tatanka in the, uh, the NES version? I'm not sure. Ted DiBiase. Uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage. You got Bret Hart. We have Shawn Michaels, we have Papa Shango, IRS, we have Ric Flair. Uh, Sid Vicious is missing. That's weird. So I guess this game might have came out after 
the NES version, and they, the roster is definitely probably a little bit different. So I'm suspecting that they removed Sid and they added someone else in. I'm thinking it might be Tatanka that they added into the game, I'm not sure. I should know, because I actually love the NES version, but I don't quite remember if Papa Shango was in the game or if Tatanka was added into the game. I'd, I'm going to have to look at that afterwards. Uh, let's uh, let's reset the game real quick. Let's try uh, championship mode. All right, let's go here, and it says Super WrestleMania on top, which is interesting. All right, let's try this out. All right, we're gonna go to WWF Championship mode. Let's uh, do that, and uh, hope. You can choose cage or regular for championship mode. Okay, who should we pick? Brett the Hitman Hart. And right away we have to fight the Undertaker. That's not fair. You have um, Howard Finkel right there doing the ring announcing. Probably the, the best ring announcer of all time right there. And we have the uh, the Undertaker making his way to the ring. And here we go. The, oh my god. And the Undertaker is already trying to kill me. And the Undertaker is wearing white shoes, which is pretty funny. What the heck was that? I was trying to get back in the ring. All right, we're going to have a rematch here. All right, so apparently you can easily go out of the ring. I didn't know that. That seems a little strange. Okay, get up. Let me see if I can beat him. And uh, the Undertaker is definitely uh, wearing some white shoots. It, it looks kind of... I don't know if he has that in the NES version, but the white shoes kind of throw me off. He's gonna stop him, stop him. Yeah, I took that, you son of a bitch. And of course, you have two life bars, as you can see there. Usually, on the NES version, if you hit select, you get a second batch of life. I don't, I don't know how that works here. Alright, let's pin him. Alright. How the hell do you pin? Oh my god, oh, oh, it's gonna Irish with me, oh. Okay, there we go. Pin him, oh my god. What the hell? Alright, we're gonna have to figure this out. Oh, he power bombed me. So you can still do the power bomb in the game, like the uh, the NES version. You can push uh, one and two together to do a power bomb, and there we go, down in one. But that was how the hell did he get out of here? There we go. And here's your winner, Brett the Hitman Hart. Alright, now we have the second match. Let's see if we can beat this game. We got Tatanka right here. And Tatanka stands no chance. Just gotta stop him. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. And, uh. Oh! Look at this, he's fighting back. I can't believe that the Undertaker was the first. The first uh, round right there. That was really weird. Let's just beat the crap out of this honk over here. Let's see if we can knock him out. Here we power bomb them and you guys health generated. Oh, he scoop slammed me. And he did a power bomb. Oh man. Get up! Let's see if we can uh, He did another scoop slam. Let's see if we can knock him down. 
And there we, oh, we tried to pin him, but that didn't work out so well. At least we know how to pin. Alright, let's, uh... Alright, yeah, his, his AI is definitely a little different than the Undertaker. See, so he's trying to avoid me, you can see that. When you do a run... A running maneuver is easier to pull off on here, also. I mean, that was easy. I don't think we had that much more uh, wrestlers to go. That might have been the last one. Now, there we go. The new World Wrestling Federation Champion is Brett the Hitman Hart. Let's see what we have here. And we have the uh, WrestleMania logo on top with Bret Hart holding up his uh, hands and got the, t the Winged Eagle title on the bottom. And it looks uh, very, very awesome on the uh, Sega Master System. Really, really awesome. And check that out, that's pretty cool. So that was pretty easy to beat. That was like much easier than the uh, NES version. And I've beat the NES version, I've beat the uh, this version right here. And recently they released one that hooks directly up to your TV. I beat that version also. Now that version is kind of weird because they tried to censor the game, but they forgot to censor it at the end. Uh, basically they tried to turn the WWF logo into a WWE logo. You know, the most the latest version they, they released uh, was the last year or the year before. At the very end of the game, when you win the championship, it still has a WWF logo, which is funny. Anyway, let's check out the cage. And also, they took out Hogan, and they put the Ultimate Warrior, which is weird. I would like to see a ROM hack of this game, where they add more wrestlers to it. That would be pretty cool. Okay, so we'll... We'll see here. We'll pick someone else this time. We'll pick Hogan. I guess Hogan versus, um... Macho Man. In a steel cage. And, uh... Just like the, uh, the NES version, the steel cage, you don't see the ropes. And, oh my god, Macho Man beat me that quick. What the hell? What was that all about? I'm sitting here button mashing and I'm trying to get up. Alright, let's try that again. Gotta stop him. Yeah, yeah take that. And you gotta keep stopping them just like that. And I hear we. Oh my god, he's gonna get up the cage. Oh no. Oh, he scoop slammed me. And Macho Man is definitely looking for the win pretty quick. Alright, let's try to claim this cage up here. Oh, no. And this is the old blue steel cage, which they, they refer to this as the shark cage from the 80s. And I think it made a debut in WrestleMania 2. Hogan vs. King Kong Bundy, that's when this cage was first used. And they, they used it for years, all the way into the Attitude Era. Uh, once they got to the Attitude Era, they painted it black. So it used to be blue. Yeah, let's see if we can get to the top. And there we go! And there's a nice simple cage match. The cage match is more fun when you play two players. When you play it like... You versus the computer, it's, it's a little, you know, it's okay, but... No, it's just a simple little match type that they add into the game. It was like the first wrestling game that had a cage, as far as I remember. So even though, like, when you look at it now, it's like, oh, that's kind of corny and not that great. Well, back then, that was really, really good, and that was actually mind-blowing. Zillion. Let's see if we can focus this camera so you guys can see that. All right, so we got Zillion, the Mega Cartridge, for one player. And uh, this is... Probably one of the most uneventful box arts I've ever seen. Like, what the hell is that supposed to be right there? Like, what what exactly is this supposed to be? It looks like some sort of computer program on DOS or something like that. It looks really weird. I mean, it looks really, really strange. I mean, if you had that on the shelf right there. In a store back in the day. Waiting to be purchased. And let's say you had... 
Let's just grab a random NES gamer here. Okay, so let's say if you had those two side by side. Which one do you want to purchase? This one or that? Obviously this one right here because the box art looks nicer. Uh, that is probably the worst looking box art. Or whatever that is. I don't know what that is, but that's doesn't make me want to purchase that game at all. And back then, that's how you definitely wanted to purchase the game. Is you looked at the box and you're like, oh, that some pretty cool looking stuff right there. So what exactly is this game? We already know that the box art is horrible. And uh, judging by the screenshots, it, it kind of looks like a, an elevator action or an impossible mission type thing. It's kind of like what it looks like. It looks like some sort of platformer. And uh, there we go, we have a brief description on what this game is. It says, are you ready for the ultimate danger? You're, let's see here, it says you're alone, outnumbered, and there is no guarantee that you'll make it alive. Like, okay. Alright, so down there on the bottom we have... The American UPC code, let's focus that for a second. Okay, let's zoom out. Zoom out. The camera does not want to behave here today. There we go. Alright, and then we have this uh, logo for uh, Jazz Rack. And <clears throat> I guess there's a number to it, 270425. And now there is some sort of... What the hell is this? This is... Really, really unique to me. It looks like some sort of, um... Let's see if we can get this here for a second. Like a stamp. A jazz rack stamp, and it has like a... Like Chinese or Japanese writing there. I can't... I think it looks like Chinese, kind of. Not exactly sure what that is, but it looks like it's actually on paper like it was actually stuck on there afterwards that's interesting that's the first time I've ever seen that and uh, of course you have the uh, slogan now there are no limits and uh, there is no manual in this as you can see here but there is the zillion cartridge right here so this appears to be some sort of crazy platforming action type game and we're gonna definitely check this out and uh, once again, there is no spine label on the, the cartridges, unlike some of the European ones have that, which is nice. You can actually stack them up and see what game is what. It's not, we're not lucky over here in America. We don't have that luxury, I guess. So uh, let's head over to the Sega Master System and let's play some Zillion. And let's find out what this is all about. It's time to play Zillion on this Sega Master System. What the hell is Zillion? Let's find out. Let's pop it in there and let's figure out what Zillion is and let's solve the mystery right now. What the hell is Zillion? Let's head over to the CRT. Here you are playing the Sega Master System. And here we are playing a Zillion. It looks like a we have some uh, anime looking stuff going on here. Now look at that cool looking title screen. We have like a... One of the uh, Sega Master System light guns looking. It looks just like that. And we have the Zillion logo over here. And this gives, you, gives us an idea of what the game does. Or what it looks like. And uh, right away it looks like a, some sort of side scroller type deal. We have to shoot. And uh... That almost has like a Metroid type thing going on here. I thought maybe elevator action or impossible mission type thing going on, but maybe Metroid now that now that I see it in action. Let's uh let's give it a try. See what exactly what this is here. You see our little guy getting off like a, of a vehicle. Your mission. Steal the confidential information stored in uh five floppy disks. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. So there's a huge mission that you have to do. Okay, let's uh, try this out. 
All right, let's go. I have a feeling this is gonna be like one of those games you have to be. You have to, oh my god! It's so one of those games you're gonna have to pay really, really, really close attention to and take notes. Just to try to figure out exactly where you're supposed to go. Okay, so. See right there, we have a lot of enemies. You have to try to avoid them at all costs. Okay, so we're on like a, some sort of planet right here. And here we are going down an elevator. Let's see what we have down here. Oh, he shot me and I ended up like going into like a different area right there. Alright, so here we are. We have, uh... So they, they gave us a series of codes. I have a feeling those codes we had to actually write down. So... There's really not too many ways for us to actually play the game accurately without writing stuff down here. Alright, let's go up here. What is this? I kind of like how you can damage stuff in this game. Look at this. That's pretty cool. So this is a little example of what this game looks like. It, it, so far, oh my god, look at this, the enemies are coming. They sounded the alarm. Alright, let's go on the computer one more time. You have no cards, okay, so... There's apparently a card that we're supposed to have. Let's go to the other side. Oh my god. Let's go over here. And we have to crawl on the ground. Because these guys are like... Coming out all over the place. Look at this. They're definitely trying to kill me. What is that? What's that like a, a land... A little landmine trip thing? So I'm guessing we have to jump over that. So those things actually blow up, which kind of suck. Now what do we have up here? Let's see. Alright, let's go this way. So far we have no cards. Okay, so... We can't get past there, it's just like uh, some sort of barrier. Uh, so far, this game seems very intriguing. Like, I'm really interested in playing this. Like, this is my first time playing this game, but it seems really interesting so far. It seems like something that I would really enjoy playing. So I, I might suck right now playing this game. Now, it has... The absolute worst box art imaginable, but so far the gameplay is really fun. It's actually really good so far. Let's, uh, let's see exactly if we can find a card or something. Let's find out. Oh, we can go down here. Let's see what's down here. Oh, this guy wants to shoot me. I like the sound effects, how they sound. Alright, here we go. What's on this computer here? Okay, so that's that. Can we jump into this, this area over here? Oh, apparently you can go through that, but you probably lose a little bit of life. It's not, not a good idea. Alright, let's go over here. Alright, let's see if we can... I do see like a card or something up there. What is that? Let's go over there. Okay, I picked that up. I'm not sure what that was. That was not a card. That was something else. Maybe that was life. There's nothing up there, so let's go back to the land. Like, on top of the... Up here. Let's see if we can go up here. Let me 
you see the music changes there. This is actually pretty good music too. So I don't think we have much of a choice but to go down here. Oh, it killed me! Alright, floppy disk, ID card. They have like a little cross. Like a little uh, gravestone cross. That's something you would never see on the NES. That's uh, pretty interesting. Alright, let's uh, try this again. Alright, oh, oh. Let's go over here. Alright, let's run. Oh. The sound effects are really something on this game. I, I really like how the sound effects sound. Especially the jumping. You hear that? Oh my god. Alright, there we go. Let's get over to the end here. There's gotta be something. I never played this before, so forgive me if I suck at this, but I'll tell you what, I am having fun. This is like a dead end. Makes me wonder if like if there's like a hidden hidden area or something. Alright, let's go over here. There's nothing up here. We're gonna have to go back down here. Okay. Input command. And I guess this is where you would have to like enter like a secret, like a code. Error. I don't know what the code is to be honest, but there's the card right there. So we do have a card. I have no idea what the uh, the actual code is, though. I have no idea. So you have to pay really close attention and write down everything on this game. Oh, oh my God! He killed me again. So ID cards, floppy disk. Somehow I have. I don't know where I got the ID cards from. But that's a little example of Zillion on the Sega Master System. It's one of those, it has like a Castlevania, not Castlevania, Metroid type feel to it. Or uh, Impossible Mission. And uh, the game, you have to pay really close attention, you have to write down the exact uh, passcodes and stuff like that to actually get by. And uh, that little spaceship thing right there, that kind of looks like a Fantasy Zone, which I have. Where is it? Yeah, this is Fantasy Zone right there. That little spaceship looks like it comes from Fantasy Zone, which is interesting. I wonder if those two games are tied together somehow in the same universe. That's interesting. So, uh... That is it. Zillion on the Sega Master System. A little quick uh, example of what it looks like. It's pretty cool. Definitely uh, gonna try that again. It definitely looks pretty fun. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane and you want to see more Sega Master System games, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. And uh, if you're from Europe, let me know uh, what games you'd like to see me import. So I'm definitely uh, very interested in importing more games from Europe.